down below you. Yep. Okay, good to see everyone uh, that's here and uh, online. And uh, we'll try to get started here. We're going to do our theme song. It's been that way for 30 years, so uh, we probably know it by heart. But uh, if you've got a book at home, you can turn to it. And I hope you're singing with us. Singing is good for you. It really helps. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love. For Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. Praise thee, O God, for the Spirit of God, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain. Who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thank the glory. Revive us again. All right, that sounded good. If you turn to 190, uh, our scripture for that is found in the book of Deuteronomy. In chapter 33 and 27, it says, God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. <coughs> Think about that. Held by the everlasting arms of God. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arm, I have blessed you. What a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arm, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning. Everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, say. And secure from all along, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my. Leaning on the everlasting arm, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting. Okay, everybody singing and partaking of that. That's what the, what you like about singing. That must have been the reason that God commanded that we do that. Singing, make a melody in your heart to the Lord. Our next song is 1A, and uh, it's from the Gospel of uh, the Book of Psalms, chapter 92 and verse 5. And it says, O Lord, how great... 
are thy works. Think about that. Having for a good friend that set the world in motion, set everything together. I, I can't wrap my mind around it, but I do what I can, do the best I can. So how great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe is played. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. and getting ready for the tape. And I'd always sung by myself before I came into the church. I uh, played a guitar and uh, sung by myself. And when you're doing that, you can do what they call freelancing. You could hold it as long as you want to, or you could cut it off if you want to, however you want to sing. And so we were doing that, and Glenn said, if we ever get Jimmy straightened out, we'll be all right. And, uh, but I enjoyed it. It, he, was, he was a good man and a good song leader. Number 35 is our prayer song this morning. It's a spoken request from the congregation. Jimmy, I talked with Teresa McCarty today, and she is going to be moved to a um, like rehab or nursing home because she's struggling with the where she was in like a, I don't want to 
just that coma that she was just unresponsive for a while. And so she's having to learn how to walk and stuff again. And so she's she's struggling with that as well. And she just asked for prayers. So yeah. she could use her. Is she a Christian in you no? Know? I don't think so. Not only pray for her health, but for her soul. And that helps. That helps too. Anybody else? Jimmy, we need to continue to remember Steve Finch. I think he's still in the hospital uh, yeah. from the accident he had there at the recycle yeah. zone. You know, and you, you stop to think about it, you get hurt so simple. So simple. One misstep. And, and it can put you in bad shape. So I know as I've gotten older, I used to wonder why older people walk looking down. Now I know. You better watch your feet. <laughs> you need to watch your feet. You really do. You fall off lazy. I've failed several times. So I remember Steve tonight going through a lot. Our rehab can be very, very tough on you. So I remember him. Did we send him a card? No, I haven't. If you would, Charlene, that would be great. Okay. Anybody else? I want to thank the church for their prayers. And my boy, Gary Wayne, broke his foot yesterday. He heard tug, so he needs a friend. Okay, your son? Yeah. Broke a foot? Yeah, he needs tugs. Okay, everybody remember him, Gary? And uh, we missed you last night. We're glad you're better. Anyone else? We don't have any problems, do we, really? But for an hour, but for an hour. Just try to divest everything from your mind, whatever troubles you, and turn it over to the Lord and enjoy the service. I come out of here tonight, I took time out of my life to serve the Lord. I'm going to do it. I ain't going to let, let nothing else interfere with that. Anyone else? Number 235, it's a good prayer song because it, somewhere in those verses, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself in those verses. And the scripture for that is found in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7. Casting all of your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Man, what a statement. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Let me find it here. If the world can you withhold of its silver and its gold, and you have to get along with meager fare, just remember in his word how he feeds a little bird. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord. Your health you can't regain, and your soul is almost sinking in despair. Jesus knows the pain you feel, He can save and He can heal. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Surely bring you out, bring your burden to the Lord and leave it there. When your enemies assail and your heart begins to fail, don't forget that God in heaven makes your prayer. He will make a way for you and will lead you safely through. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. the Lord and leave it there. If you trust him never doubt, he will surely bring you 
Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this another night, dear Lord, that we can come together and assemble here, dear Heavenly Father, and sing praises to you, dear Lord, and bring petitions to you, dear Heavenly Father, and to hear your word today. We pray tonight for those uh, petitions that were mentioned here. We leave those things in your hands, and we know that you're in a great position. We know, dear Heavenly Father, that you know all things. Uh, you know the things that need to be done. We ask you such as you know. Pray that you would be with those that are locked out in sin, and that if they hear this message tonight, dear Lord, that it may spark something in their mind yes. and point them toward Jesus Christ as their Savior. Mm -hmm. We're thankful for the men this week that have preached, dear Heavenly Father, that have spoken the word, and we're thankful for Jimmy and Dan that's coming tonight, dear Lord, and we just pray that you would anoint them, Heavenly Father, with the word and the message that you want spoken to us tonight. Be with all the many in the country, dear Heavenly Father, that are suffering. Be for all the men, be with all the many, dear Heavenly Father, that are providing care for them. The first responders, dear Heavenly Father, yes. caretakers. Yes. So many people, dear Heavenly Father, affected, and we just ask that you be with them, be with our country. We would hope, dear Heavenly Father, that those that are in leadership roles would look to you for guidance and follow what you would have them to do. Again, go with us through this night here tonight. We pray that we may gain something that would help us to walk just a little closer with you, dear Heavenly Father, and that it would help us maybe to bring others into the boat before it's everlasting too late. Again, we praise you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. I'm going to keep it short tonight and give Dan more time. There's passages in the Bible that intrigues all of us. And uh, somebody tell me the shortest verse in the Bible. Jesus Had you ever thought about that verse? Jesus wept. Once we become a Christian, I think that's where we get our power, our compassion, our ability to love, all of those things, just as he did on that occasion. There was uh, another time, uh, did you know that God laughs? He does. He said, I will laugh at their calamities. It's in there, I guarantee you. Shouldn't that make us feel a little closer to him? He weeps, and he loves us, and he laughs. And then there's one more in the Bible. I never did start out and it's good. Our, our, our guys do it here. And it's good. It's good. That they tell you where it's at. But my take on that, when I first started preaching, I said, look, if I tell you where it's at, it may just go over the top of your head. And you may not even remember it. But I said, if you have to look it up, you'll be surprised what all you can find in the Bible when you're looking for particular thing. So everybody has their methods, and, and that's good for the congregation, the way the other elders do it. But that's just something I always done, and and uh, I hope it worked for somebody. Uh, the night that Jesus went up on the mountain, and he looked down on the city of Jerusalem, 
And by the way, uh, people that don't believe the Bible is real, if for no other reason, I would read in the Bible about cities that are still there today. Still there. Places that he went are still there today. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that slayeth the prophets. He said, how oft would I have gathered you under my wings as a hen doth gather her brood. And he said, you would not. <coughs> Talk about love and compassion that he had. He really had it. And so tonight we're going to sing this song. Brother Dan, come on. Uh, number 512. And this is a good one. There's a lot of truth in In these songs, songs need to have truth in them. If you sing a fable, you teach a fable. If you sing a myth, you teach a myth. If you sing a scripture, you ought to be able to give it. And it says, the title of it's the world's Bible. And from the book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, it says, Christ liveth in me. Now, I'm going to ask one, add one thing, not to that, but do you believe that tonight? That there is a part of Jesus Christ that lives within you, your mind, your heart. Think about it. Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no tongue but our tongue to lead him in the way. He has no tongue but our tongue to tell me how we die. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. Are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the sinner's gospel. We are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's first word. What if the type is crooked? What if the print is blurred? If our hands are busy with other things than his, what if our feet are walking where sins alone is? What if our tongues are speaking of things his life was burned? How can we hope to help him and welcome his return? What well, I do with that, Paul? One of my boys. Thanks, Brother Jimmy. I'll need that soon enough. I'll slide it over here for now. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason Paul and I swap. I get the corner, I stay out of people's way. That, that song uh, is one that, that I actually selected put it in the box back there on Sunday and it actually kind of ties in with actually with the closing of the message here tonight uh, Christ has no hands but our hands to do his work today we need to be uh, faithful to the Lord we need to get his word out we need to tell other people about God's word and about the Lord Jesus Christ who came into this world that we might be saved uh, turn to page 441 will be our song of invitation today. And I will be in the book of uh, Philippians today, chapter 2. But before I get there, I want to read from John chapter 13, beginning with verse 4. This was... Uh, 
the Last Supper, Jesus Christ with his 12 apostles, supper had ended, and it says, He riseth from supper, that's Jesus, He riseth from supper, and laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Now he knew who should betray him, therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. For ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Let us pray. Dear Lord, I'm so thankful for this and other opportunity to share your word, Lord, with, with uh, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, and, and for many out there, Lord, that may not know you. I pray, Lord, that this word will not come back to you void, that, that people will hear this word, that it'll, it'll get them closer to you, it'll revive the Christians, Lord, that we all might get a little bit closer to you. I pray you'll be with me and and bring to my remembrance the things that I've studied, that, that the things that go out here will be pleasing to you and in accordance with your word. All these things I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 2. <laughs> Paul writing here to the church at Philippi. Now, the church at Philippi was doing pretty much what they're supposed to be. You, you can read all the way through the book of Philippians here and not find some place where he's had to get after them for doing something wrong. They were doing like they should have been, and, and Paul praised them for that. If there be, therefore, any consolation, which basically means there is consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of spirit, if any bowels and mercy... Consolation in Christ, our comfort can only be found through Christ. That's the only way where we can really see, receive comfort is through Christ. And it, it's the comfort of love. And that Christ is love. God is love. And he loved us before we loved him. It says, if any fellowship of the Spirit. Fellowship is, is sharing with one another. And this is fellowship of the Spirit. The Spirit shares with us. The Spirit shares with each and every one of us. And if we're all in fellowship with the Spirit, we're in fellowship with each other. That's right. In this entire Bible, there's fellowship in this entire Bible. 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. There were about 40 different men that wrote the scriptures. But they were all led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the author. They were led by the Holy Spirit. They had fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It wasn't their private interpretation that they wrote for us. It was what the Holy Spirit sent for them to write to us. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 
for the Holy Spirit. It's through the Holy Spirit. And that's why we have the Bible, because it was sent by the Holy Spirit. And uh, it, it also says, and, and, uh, and if any bowels and mercies, or if we have any pity on somebody, or, or uh, comfort, I can't read my own writing. I'm modest and misspelled it. <laughs> but it, um, the, the bowels is, is referring to things that, that are unhealthy and things like that. It, it was an old, old Testament reference and, and mercies. We should have mercy on other people that are not doing well, that are sick and afflicted. The next verse says, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Again, if we all have the Spirit of Christ within us, or this Holy Spirit dwelling within us, then we should be in fellowship <coughs> one with another. In, um, over in uh, chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you, or else be absent. This is Paul speaking about whether or not he would come to see him again. He said, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. As Christians, we should all be striving together for the faith of that gospel. We need to be in unison on that and in one accord. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Vainglory is self-esteem to we shouldn't be lifting ourselves up above other people. We don't do things to help somebody else to make us look good. We do something for somebody else because we care about them and we right. want to help them. Right. It has nothing to do with, with us when we do that. Looking not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. Now I read this verse, the first thing I think of, that sounds like being a busybody. That's not what it's talking about here. You know, there's, there's times when you might go up to somebody and say, how are you doing? And I'm sure everybody's heard it. What difference does it make? Nobody will listen. Why do we ask somebody how they're doing if nobody's going to listen? I mean, if, if somebody asks me how I'm doing, I'll tell them I'm doing fine. That's probably how I'm doing at the time. But if we ask somebody how they're doing, we should mean it. You know, it shouldn't be just some flippant, Com, uh, comment uh, to say how are you doing just to break the ice or whatever it is we should care about that other person we should care how they're doing um, so we need to look upon other people's welfare and I, I've heard it said from the pulpit here before I think brother Jimmy you know there's times when we may have something going on in our lives and it's got us worried it's got us bogged down we're so concerned about what's going on in our life that it's eating up our minds and it's, it's causing us all kinds of trouble. We're worried about it constantly. It's a constant worry, and we can't get it out of our minds. We can get it out of our minds. We can look at other people, see how they're doing. You know, you might, you know, you get a hangnail. It'll, it'll make your whole finger hurt and then your hand, and it gets on your mind. But if you let that control you, you know, you're not going to see what's going on around you. Notice other people, you know. Brother Ronnie's cousin had part of his leg cut off the other day. So what? how big is a hangnail? We need to have compassion for other people. We need to care about other people. And if we put our mind on other people and pray for other people and their concerns and the things that are going on in their life, we'll forget all about that hangnail. Or whatever it might be, it it becomes so uh, small. It's not something that we should be worrying about. I I know we have some major problems, a whole lot more problems than hangnails, but we still need to be concerned with other people and help them when they're down, when they're having difficult times. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 
we don't have the mind of Christ Jesus to think that we are equal with God. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's talking about here. It's a, the next verse, we'll get into that. But Jesus Christ is equal with God. In uh, the Gospel of John, right at the very beginning, chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Good. And this is speaking, the word there is Jesus Christ. And in verse 14, it tells us that, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ came into this world. He came down here. He was in heaven. From everything I read in the scriptures, that'd be the ideal place to be. But he left there to come down to earth, to this place, because he cared about us. And he became a human. He became man. And as a man, he was tempted in all things like we are. Every sin that we're tempted with, he was tempted with. But he was without sin. Let this mind be in you, which was also in, uh, let this mind be in in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And then in verse 7 it says, But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. That's right. Jesus Christ became a servant. We saw that when he washed the, the apostles' feet. He was showing an example of being a servant. That's what he was talking about. And we all need to be servants for one another and for the Lord. It says, And he was made in the likeness of men. In uh, Matthew 23, 11, it, Jesus said, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. We need to be servants, one for another, one to another. We need to help each other and do the things we can to, to help one another. It says, But he made himself of no reputation and took upon the form, himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. Did he not humble himself when he washed the feet of the apostles? He certainly did. We need to humble ourselves when we come to Jesus Christ. That's the biggest part about becoming a Christian is to humble yourself to realize that we cannot do it by ourselves. Right. We need to have Jesus Christ in our life. And we need to do it according to what he says. We need to follow him. We need to do what Jesus says and not what the world tells us. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto the death, even the death of the cross. Jesus Christ was obedient to the Father. He never, he never turned from what the Father said. When he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he didn't want to go to the cross. He didn't want to die on that cross. He knew what kind of pain it would be. And he said, Father, please take this cup from me. Please take this suffering away from me. I don't want to have to go through it. And then he said, but not what my will, but thine be done. He was obedient to the Father. Mm -hmm. He even went three times and prayed that same prayer. <laughs> But he was obedient to the Father and he went to the cross because he knew that he needed to go to the cross so that we might receive salvation. And also in chapter 12 of Hebrews, uh, verses 1 and 2, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Brother Tom told us about running yesterday. We need to run with patience. We do have a race. Every single one of us have a race. And like you said, it's a marathon. We need to continue. And we need to continue on that marathon. And looking unto Jesus, it says, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You know, I said he, he endured the cross. He did. He did it for us but he did it for the joy that was set before him. Jesus Christ was in heaven, and he came down to earth. He knew what heaven was like. 
The Apostle Paul, we're told, saw into the third heaven, or, or he knew a man that saw into the third heaven, but we most believe that, that that was Paul himself. He saw into the third heaven, and he saw things that he could not lawfully utter. He was not allowed to tell anybody about it. And today we have all kinds of books where people tell you what heaven's like. The Apostle Paul saw into the third heaven, into the abode of God. And he's not allowed to tell us what it was like. Hmm. The Apostle Paul gave his life for the Lord as well in his ministry for the Lord. He did everything he could for the Lord. And he was, he was put to death as well because of his ministry for the Lord. It says, Jesus had said, despising the shame and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Paul and Jesus both knew what heaven was like and they were willing to do whatever it took to be able to, to spend eternity in heaven. Wherefore, yeah, that's where I'm at. Verse 9, wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. God has lifted up Jesus Christ. He gave him a name that's above all names. In Acts 4.12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. That's right. Jesus Christ said he was the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by him. It doesn't matter. There's only one true God, and the only way to that one true God is through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the only way. We hear all kinds of things out in the world about other gods and everything else that's going on. It's contrary to what the Bible says. It's contrary to the word of the one true God. It's contrary to what Jesus taught. And it's contrary to how we need to live our lives. Jesus also said, all power was given to me, both in heaven and in earth. It was given to him of the Father. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Mm -hmm. Notice the word should in there. These are things we ought to do. You know, if we're going to become a Christian, these are things we need to do, aren't they? In uh, Romans 14, we hear about the same thing, but it's really different if you listen to it. And if you pay attention, these are things we should do while we are in this life. Whether we do or not, this one's true. For It says, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. It's not an option. It's going to happen. We should do it in this life while we're able. But if we don't do it in this life, we're still going to stand before the judgment seat of God. And we're going to bow down to him, and we're going to confess that he's Jesus, the Son of God, and we'll, we'll confess that to God, and we will bow down to Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Paul's not with him anymore. When Paul was in Philippi, we, we could go back to uh, Acts chapter 16, and we read in Philippi that when he and Silas, they, they went by the river and there was a, a women's prayer group going on. And they went down and they told them about Jesus Christ. And it was Lydia and her household, all of them believed and were baptized. They all accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Then some other things went on there and before they knew it, Paul and Silas were in jail. They were in prison. And about midnight, they were singing. They were singing praises to God. And the other, the other people in the prison or jail heard what they had to say or what they were singing. And an earthquake happened. They were singing and praying. 
in prison. And there was an earthquake and all the bars of the prison popped open. And the jailer was scared to death because the jail, jailer has to serve all their sentences if they escape. He didn't want to do that. He'd have been put to death. But Paul said, hey, you're okay. You know, don't worry about it. We're all still here. He said, what must I do to be saved? There's no place in the Bible where that question is asked or a similar question where, where they're told, oh, you don't have to do anything. They told him he needed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, he and all his house, and they would receive salvation. But the very next verse says, and they, they spake unto him the word of the Lord. He didn't know what to believe yet. So they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and within the very same hour, and then the very next verse, they went to the, they, they went down and were baptized. He and all his straightway is what we're told. The entire family was, was baptized. And then they came back and they had a meal and they rejoiced. They didn't rejoice and then go get baptized. They were baptized and they came back and they rejoiced. It was that great a thing for them that they, they rejoiced. And that's, you know, when we, when we have baptisms here, we see the same thing. Everybody rejoices. It does everybody's heart good. You know, I, during the Song of Invitation, so many times, I'll have one or two people on my mind. Somebody that, that I don't think's ever accepted the Lord. And it, it, it's, it's difficult sometimes singing because you get somebody on your mind and you're praying, praying real hard that they might accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we're, uh, let me get that verse again, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, and he's writing to the church of Corinth here, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's something we have to do too. Yes, we are saved by grace. Yes, we are saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. But we need to hear the word. We need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. We need to repent. We need to say, Lord, I, I, I want to start living my life for you. I want to get rid of this old life. And we need to confess Jesus Christ before men and be baptized for remission of sins. And when we're baptized, according to Romans 6, we go down into the water, we're buried, and we come up out of the water, and we are a new creature in Christ. That's right. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. When we accept Jesus Christ by being baptized into his death, which is what we're doing, we are baptized into Jesus Christ. We need to be in Jesus Christ. That's what that verse said. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The only places I've found in the scriptures where we can get into Christ is through baptism. It's through a burial and water. Romans 6 that I mentioned and also in Galatians 3. We are baptized into Christ. Jesus Christ, it says, was obedient even unto death. In Hebrews 5, verses 8 and 9, we're told, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them who obey him. Again, there is an obedience to it. We need to work Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling is what it says there. And in Acts 2, I'd like to read a few verses there. Peter had been preaching to the multitudes, telling them about uh, Jesus Christ and who he was, and that he was the Savior. He was the promised Messiah that they rejected, that they put to death. And it says now when they heard this, that they... They had crucified the Messiah. It says, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? 
Again, the answer was not, oh, you don't have to do anything. It says, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's right. For the promise is unto you, the Jewish people, and to your children, their descendants, and to those who are afar off, the Gentiles, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This is a promise to all these people. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Save yourselves. There's something we have to do, too. We have to accept it. When we're given a free gift, we gotta, we got to accept it. We may have to open it up or whatever, but we have to accept it in some way well, somewhere or another. We accept Jesus Christ by repenting, by confessing him before man and being baptized for remission of sins. But then we continue faithfully unto death to receive the crown of life. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And now I know I used to be so impressed, 3,000 souls. And I hear it a lot of times. A great number. I would love to see 3,000. But now this 3,000, there were probably a million or two million Jews there. They, it was the day of Pentecost. They were required to be there in Jerusalem. You know, 3,000 is still a great number, and we need to keep working for that, and we need to keep doing it one soul at a time. That's all it takes. It doesn't take 3,000 at a time. We continue telling one soul at a time about Jesus Christ and pray that they will accept him. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. James 1, 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We don't just hear the word. We have to do. We have to do what the Lord would have us to do. Do all things without murmuring and disputings. Well, you know, I know this is the way you guys do it, but that's just too much for us. We don't want to do that. You know, God, I know when you when you uh, told me to build an ark, you know, that seems like a lot of work and it's probably going to take me 100 years. And God told him to do it, but and Noah went ahead and did it. He didn't question it. He didn't say, I can't do that, God. That's too much work. 100 years, that's a long time, God. And then you're telling me that it's going to rain? It's never rained before. You know, and people want to dispute the, the scriptures. I had a minister one time telling me that baptism wasn't necessary. And I had him read uh, Mark sixteen sixteen, And he read it and he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I said, now what did that say? And he said, he read it to me. And he said, well, I could explain it to you, but you wouldn't understand it. We, we don't believe the same way there. And I said, no, what did it say? He said, no, you're, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. So <laughs> he wasn't going to bother telling me. You know, if he was a Christian and, and he understood that better than I did, I would think he would love me enough to share it with me. But he didn't even want to share it with me. He knew what it said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he didn't believe that. There's a lot of people in this world that believe a lot of things and believe some things aren't sins that the Bible very clearly says is a sin. They're going to answer for that sin even though they believe it's not a sin. When it's clear and, and word for word in the Bible tells you that this is a sin covetousness you spend all your time coveting what everybody else has stealing you go around stealing everything that other people have and say well it's not really a sin maybe somebody even starts murdering people and say well it's not really a sin the bible's pretty clear about it verse 
Verse 15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. We need to be examples. We need to let our light shine or let Jesus' light shine through us. It says to a wicked, so it says to a crooked and perverse nation, which would be a wicked nation as well. You know, we've, we can't deny that we live in a nation like that, that is crooked and perverse. And we need to shine as lights of the world. Romans 5, 14 to 16 says, Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We need to be letting people see our light shine. Not just say, yeah, yeah, our, our light shines, but we need to be showing it by doing things for other people, by helping other people. By telling other people about the Lord, we need to let our light shine. Holding forth the word of life. This is the word of life, the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, in the gospel, is the power of God unto faith power of God. It's right here in the Bible. And that's what brings people to him. Holding forth the word of God, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. This is Paul writing to the Philippians. You need to be preaching the word is what he's telling him, telling the people in Philippi. You need to be telling other people about Christ. You need to spread the word. Everybody needs to hear about him. Everybody needs to have that opportunity to give their life to Christ. And Paul says that if you do that, he said that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. We need to be doing the work. We need to carry on the work that Paul and the apostles did. We need to continue to tell people about Christ that's what we need to do as Christians. That's our main responsibility is to tell others about the Lord, to bring other people into the fold. We need to study in order to be able to do that. We need to be like the Bereans that I talked about a couple nights ago. They checked, they checked out what Paul said, made sure what Paul said was true. We need to be doing the same thing. And I, that's, that's what brought me to the Lord in the first place. Brother Jimmy mentioned several things that, uh, you know, the Bible says God laughed. It does. It's in there. Did you know there was a, there's, there's a story in there, or, or a, it's true, that an axe head floated? You think, well, they're made out of steel. This one was iron. It even said it was iron. And it floated on the water. Uh, there's all kinds of things like that in the scriptures. If we'll take the time to search the scriptures to find out what's in there. And Jimmy, I'm not going to tell them where it's at. They can look that up. <laughs> but it's in there. I looked it up the other day. Uh, but there's a lot in this scripture. There's a lot in this word. And we need to study. We need to know what the Bible says. And we need to follow it to the very best of our ability. At this time, uh, we're going to have our song of invitation. If there's anybody here that's, that's not a Christian, if you have heard the word and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, we would ask you to, uh, to come forward. You have to hear the word. You have to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. How are you going to believe that if you've never heard the word? It's like the jailers. He didn't know what to believe, so they preached to him the word of God. So after you hear the word, you can believe because you know what it is to believe.
And I think you've gone through that here these last few nights. You know what to believe. That Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. After that, we need to repent. You need to make a commitment saying, God, I can't do it on my own. I need your help. We need to humble ourselves and say, God, I want to be yours for the rest of this life so that I can spend eternity with you. That's repentance, turning your life around and following the Lord. If you've done those things, we'd ask you to come forward here tonight if you'd like to give your life to Christ, to confess Jesus Christ before men. Whosoever therefore shall confess him before men, him, they, he will confess them before the Father in heaven. But it also says, whosoever denies him before men, he will deny before the Father in heaven. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, you're denying him. And then you're baptized for remission of sins. And then you get to be with the rest of us here trying to continue faithfully. That's the hard part. I'm not going to kid you. You know, it's it's not all roses and everything's real good and, and, and great when you become a Christian. Everything good doesn't happen to you. You still have the same kind of trials, same kind of tribulations, same kind of things going on in your life. Family members die. Just because you're a Christian, that doesn't stop. Those things continue, the things that are of the world, but we're no longer of the world as a Christian. And that comfort, that comfort that, that was talked about at the beginning of this chapter, it's in Christ Jesus. He's our comfort. We can go to him. People that don't have the Lord in their life, when they suffer those things, I don't know where they go. But we have Jesus Christ and God the Father who is the Father of all comfort. Mm -hmm. We have him in our lives. Again, our, our song of invitation. 441. If you want to stand, please. It's hard to make excuses when you know the truth. It's a hard thing to come to. It doesn't come easy. But I believe we're told you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You're free. You're free from sin. Meet me there. I wish all of my family would do that. I have talked to all of them. Whether or not they do I've done my part. I've done my job. We need to meet in that place. The scripture for that is found in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 2. In the midst and on either side of the river was there the tree of life. On that happy golden shore Where the faithful part no more When the storms of life are o'er Meet me there Where the night dissolves away Into pure and perfect day I am going home to stay Meet me there Meet me there Meet me there Where the tree of life is with me Meet me there when the storms of life are o'er on that happy golden shore where the faithful part no more. Meet me there. Here our fondest hopes are vain, dearest lakes are red and twain, but in heaven no robbers pain. Meet me there by the river's sparkling bright. In the city of delight, where our faith is lost inside, meet me there. Meet me there. Meet me there. Where the tree of life is with me, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er on the happy golden shore. Where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Where the songs of angels ring, and the blessed forever sing, in the palace of the king, meet me there.
Where is sweet communion bliss? Heart with heart and friend to friend. In a world that ne'er shall end, meet me there. Meet me there. Meet me there. Where the tree of life is blooming, meet me there. When the storms of life are o'er, on the happy golden shore, where the faithful part no more, meet me there. Anybody have a word before we dismiss? You realize that used to, we did this for two weeks. Have Let's we go. weakened? Have we weakened down a little bit? Let's go. I couldn't make it. <laughs> hey, there's no school next week. <laughs> yeah, I'd try, but I, I'm telling you, revival is good for a church. We need to keep what we've got. We don't need to lose anybody. And so I wouldn't take anything for the things in my life that's happened right here. You're all a part of it. You're good people to be with. That means a lot. Very good people. Yeah. It's a good looking crowd, isn't it, Doc? <laughs> it always is. Yeah. Anybody else have anything before we dismiss? I love and appreciate all of you myself. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I look around this and, um, you know, they always talk about preaching to the choir. You know, I think we've got a lot of good faithful Christians here today. And I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I hope this did something to lift you up and, and get you a little bit closer to the Lord. Uh, maybe a little something to to get you a little more more energized to tell other people about the Lord. Patsy, could you unmute this these people on the I would appreciate it because I'm gonna ask Brother Grady if he would dismiss us with a word of prayer. Okay. I don't know if that'll help or not. Yeah. You there Grady? Maybe he's not. He's still there. Uh, if not, Brother Joe, would you dismiss us with a word? Our Father, which art in heaven, Lord, we thank you for another night you let us come back out here to be at your house, Lord. Thank you for this uh, message that was brought to us again today, Lord, that makes us just a little bit stronger to be a better servant. Pray, Lord, for all those prayer requests that was made earlier, Lord, and those many that are sick and afflicted around about us. That you'll take care of their bodies as only you know how. Pray for those that lost loved ones. But most of all, Lord, we want to continue to pray for those that don't know who you are. Because out in this lost and dying world, world is I have no idea where they're going to. Maybe that we can be that light upon in that city that was talked about earlier. And we can be that light sitting up on that hill that they can see something and they'll want it and they'll come to it and come to you before it's everlasting and too late. We'll say that word that they need to hear. Yes. Help us, Lord, as we depart from this place. We don't depart from thy presence, but if you go with us, lead us, guide us, direct us, and let us always put you first and foremost in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good job, Daniel. Good service. Good job. I know that's what I was trying to do. Not to let preach. Are you there, Grady? Oh, man. Before so long, too. Because memos 